Welcome to Late Lot Build. We have a special episode today. Today is going to be titled something like what we would do different. <laughs> We're not completely done with the build yet, but there are already several things that we know we would have changed or we would have done a little bit different. And I know when we were looking at building our ICF home, these are the kinds of videos that I looked for on YouTube. So hopefully this will be helpful for some of you that are planning to build either a conventional home or um, really helpful for one of you who, for those of you who are looking to build an ICF home. So first up. Okay, here we go. Um, thinking about the light deck. So we did light deck for our suspended garage floor pour. We also used a product uh, called light deck for our roof. That's correct. So here's what I have for light deck. Light deck has these metal uh, joists, if you, would, if you would, underneath there, and that's what you attach underneath there, uh, whether it be drywall or whatever it is on the underneath side of it. Now, it is imperative that the light deck, <clears throat> that those metal strips run parallel with each other and perfectly perpendicular to that wall and parallel to that wall because when you go back to put your drywall on, in my occasion, then if they are off, it gets worse and worse and worse as you put those pieces of, of uh, light deck on there. Now. Did it not get looked at when it was during the install? Did it move or twist a little bit or adjust itself when that concrete was put, mm -hmm. it was put on there? I don't know, but if I were to do it again, I would make sure to use wood furring, just a simple two by four on its side. Um, and that would make life a lot easier because it's about one and a half inches wide, but if you can think the steel curves and it curves, so you actually only have about an inch to catch that, put that screw in. And if you have two pieces that are, that are butted up to each other, it's almost impossible unless you're dead on and have to cut every single piece of drywall on the end, and some, most of them on multiple ends, on both ends, for it to line up perfectly and it was uh, very cumbersome. We had some viewers comment. We have a couple of different vi uh, videos where we're cutting out the styrofoam to run uh, to run our electrical and some different things. We had some viewers comment, wouldn't it be easier to fur it out? It would be. <laughs> it would have been. It would have been. You were all right. And so if you use light deck in the future, fur out your ceilings. <laughs> Please do, because you hit, then becomes from one inch to three and a half inches, and that makes a huge difference, yeah. an absolute huge difference. And you're going into uh, into wood, which you don't have to use the self-tapping, um, you know, uh, drywall screws that go into a metal stud. Yep. So the other thing that we would have done differently with the light deck is with the roof. We relied on the concrete finishers to create the slope on the roof, just like you see in garages, right? In garage, they usually create that slope in a garage floor. We wanted them to create that slope on the roof. Well, it wasn't perfect, and we do have some ponding and pooling on the roof. And so if we had either poured that front wall a little bit higher or had a slope built into the light deck, we wouldn't have had to rely totally on the concrete finishers to get that slope right. And it was, and, and, I, and I can't remember back in that day if the concrete was getting hot and it was setting up faster, but it caused a problem. It's a problem. So if the light deck being laid perfectly flat, if it was adjusted just a little bit, you can still have the same thickness, Right. or you know, one side is thicker, then that's what they chose is one side's thicker and then it gets thinner back down to the nominal size. If I were to do it again, I would have mandated more slope. We will cross that bridge and we will get it figured out. Um, as you can see behind us, there's going to be a rooftop deck on that baby. And that view from up there is spectacular. It's going to be awesome. Yep, it's going to be awesome. But if we had it all to do over again, those are the things we'd change on the light deck. Yeah. So the other thing that we did is that we had a company come out of Springfield to do all the cutting and coring of our concrete block for all of our openings. And what would we do differently, John? <laughs> I wouldn't have done it. It's that simple. 
I believe in my design idea. I believe in my layout of where I wanted everything, and I was talked out of that we don't need to. We, we don't don't. We'll just come back and we'll put a we'll, we'll cord or we'll cut it. Uh, the knockouts that I wanted to put in mm -hmm. because I did put a couple of them in and they have worked perfect. Right. The coring, on the other hand, not happy with. No. Not happy with at all because it created a, a enormous mess and. It was expensive. It was expensive. We paid probably $2,000 to have the core, coring and cutting come out. Which I had the layout done on the front end, and I should have stuck to my guns, and I should have just said, no, I'm going to use some PVC pipe or metal or, you know, even simple round duct work. Yeah. You know, in roundness would have been strong enough that you wouldn't have a collapse in it, and it would have worked. Yeah. And so, and the reason I know is that that one right there, for my exhaust, for my uh, for my exhaust vent, that's what I used was simple uh, um, duct ducting. Mm -hmm. It worked perfect. It worked just fine. Worked perfect. So that's one. That's another thing that we would have done differently. Um, oh, what about checking our rough openings? So here's another thing, and it's the old saying of uh, you know check why check twice and cut once. Yeah. But here's the deal that I that it was really frustrating to me was to check these rough opening sizes. And <clears throat> what happened was, is that we missed at least two of them. Yeah. Uh, and those were on our doors. And uh, so the person doing the layout and the person that was doing the building, the left hand maybe not have been talking to the right hand. Um, but, you know, in when they were stacking the blocks, definitely could have been easily solved if somebody would have gone back and pulled a tape measure and said, does a standard door fit in this or not? To have a concrete saw in the house, yeah, uh, was it's a, a mess. It was an absolute mess. And that concrete saw, of course, operates on hydraulic fluid. Well, when you change pieces and the hydraulic fluid leaks on the floor, um, it causes a mess. It causes things that didn't have to happen. Right. So, check your rough openings. That's right. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> right. There, there was there was cost that did not need to happen. Yes. The other thing that we would have done differently is our design, and this was completely on us. We have no one to blame but ourselves, but we made a four-foot indention? What, I, what would you call that? Yeah, so Where that the is front at, door is. That is at the front door. So the front door is set back, set back four feet, and it's a six feet wide, and it sets back four feet. Well, I took that setback and took it all the way down to the basement. I could have taken that 24 square feet that goes, you know, floor to ceiling for the basement. My staircase could have scooted over just a little bit more, mm -hmm. and that would have gained my access to under the stairs. Yep. As of, we just could not get an access to under the stairs because that bathroom and the shower are so close to them, I couldn't get the layout for the toilet the vanities and the shower right. to be able to get back under the stairs. And so that is the only place in the house that I have unused space. Unused space. Yep. To be fair, the shower does sit under the stairs. So we do have part of the area under the stairs that's used. No, that's true. That is true. That is used, but there is that slant, that triangle yep. There's piece. There's probably that, 24 square feet. Oh, well, probably. That's yeah. not used. That's not used. And so what I would have done is that the wall would have been straight. I would have created the knockout on the floor above. Right. And then that's, that's how we would have got around And had that space down below. Yeah. So... A little design that I um, I just missed it. Oh, let's take a minute to talk about our window choice. Pellet windows. Uh, not happy with them. And the reason is it's not their function. Their function is great, yep. but a black pellet window in the series, I want to say is a 250 series, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. It's not black vinyl. It is white vinyl that is painted black. And so I did not realize that until I found a scratch on the window when they were putting it in that it's white vinyl underneath there. And so I was like, you charged me more <laughs> for black versus white and all you did was put a coat of paint on it. And yeah. so not happy about that with Pella. And so with that being said, I guess I can now paint the, the window <laughs> frame back black because <laughs> it's been painted. Well. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, right, hindsight's twenty twenty. That's yeah. why we have this video. Yeah. Yeah. That said, I wouldn't have chosen a wood window. No, no, definitely. I would still, not have chosen wood. No, 
And, I, and that's why we didn't, yeah, we still wouldn't yeah. use wood windows, yeah. maybe a fiberglass or a vinyl, but I've had wood windows and uh, just, just not that big of a fan years later. Right. They look pretty. They look gorgeous though. Um, and finally, what we got? The outside. So ICF has a UV life time issue. So ICF blocks should really not be exposed to UV light for more than six months. The blocks get dusty. They develop a uh, kind of a film, which is basically the styrofoam uh, disintegrating. I mean, to you yeah, know, lack absolutely. of a better term. Um, we did not get this house covered before the six months was up because of all of the supply chain issues. So what would we have done to prevent some of that? So prevent some my of that? thought was if, if you might think that you might have a problem, either it's a labor issue, right? You can't get guys to get, to get back. Maybe they've moved to a different project and your project has to sit for a little bit. Whatever it is that you might have a delay, wrap your ICF in some sort of house wrap, whether mm -hmm. it's Tyvek or any of those other brands just to keep the sunlight off of it. And the reason is it's not the styrofoam itself. It is the, it, uh, the tape that you tape around the windows. Even if you clean all that dusty stuff off, it still doesn't stick very well. Now, fresh, fresh styrofoam, it sticks like, I mean, it's amazing it sticks so well. So my thought would be, whether you're rough opening on a window there, go ahead, once that is done, once you have, and it's all fresh, go ahead and put a layer of that tape on there. And then you can come back and put your window in if you have a delay and you can stick the tape to the tape versus the tape to dusty styrofoam. Yeah. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. We have not. <laughs> <laughs> these are these are the problems these are the things that we're now dealing with but really you know the more research you can do the more due diligence you can do the better that said every build has problems you've been on tons of builds they Absolutely. all have problems uh, there's other questions would you build an icf again and my answer is 100 absolutely yes absolutely i would never want to build in traditional wood again after yeah. building with this. Agreed, completely agree. We have something that is so functional, so insulated, and so safe. Yes. For the area that we live in, when you're concerned about fires, tornadoes, you know, wind storms, yeah. we don't worry about any of that. No, nothing, nothing like that. No problems at all. So I hope you guys liked it and please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you've built a house, will you put in the comments one of the problems that you had on your house build? Maybe it'll make us feel better. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here today. We'll see you soon. I love you, sweetie. <laughs> love you. <laughs> Bye.